Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Join me today as we go back to the future. I've talked about it, everybody's talked about it. I think we're generally all resigned to the fact that Seiko has been slowly but steadily turning the screw on all of us in terms of pricing over the last couple of years. Their new models for less than $1,000 don't seem to offer the same value that their older models for less than $1,000 used to. Case in point, SKX 5KX. They discontinue the beloved SKX and they replace it with the 5KX, which costs more money but doesn't offer the specs that we wanted. And it's the same for pretty much all of their new offerings that I can see anyway. I've been saying for at least the last year now, therefore, if you want value for money from Seiko, you need to look backwards. You need to look at their back catalogue, to models that they've been making for five, six years or more, stuff they've been making before they started to turn the screw in terms of price. Now, for dive watches, that means that the Samurai and the Turtle are the two models to go for. Those two look better and better value with every passing year. But the watch on my wrist today, I think could be the best value Seiko that you can buy in 2021. Allow me to explain. It's a full-size watch, very, very handsome, incredibly legible, heaps of Seiko's Lumi Bright. It's an automatic with day-date complication, color matched, which is a really nice touch. It has not one, but two applied logos. Again, a very nice touch. 100 meters of water resistance, a stainless steel bracelet with plenty of micro adjusts, double security pushers. All of that for $140. The model is the SNZG13. Not ringing any bells. Don't worry, you don't need to know all of the Seiko Pack catalogue. It's this one, it's their older field watch. Now, this is not only a re-review for me today, it's also a re-buy. This was the first Seiko that I bought and reviewed on the channel four years ago, and I have bought maybe two or three dozen of the things since then. So I've got a couple of questions to answer today. Why do I think this one offers outstanding value for money? And if it offers such outstanding value for money, why did I sell it in the first place? Let's flip the camera and find out. So if my entire pitch is that this watch is sensational value for money, it makes sense to talk about money. Mentioned it in the intro, 140 US dollars, that's the Joma shop price. Plenty of them on eBay as well, around the same 140 USD. I had a look on Amazon, nothing there, they were 200 plus. I'll leave links therefore to Joma and eBay in the description of the video, but obviously do your own research, find the best deal you can for your local region, your local currency. Do bear in mind that depending on where you buy it, warranty conditions change. So if warranty is important, make sure you read the small print. I bought mine from an overseas retailer. I get the standard one year international warranty with this one. Therefore, I've always thought it was a really, really good looking watch. Big, full size, handsome, legible, Perhaps for gentlemen whose eyes aren't quite as sharp as they used to be, this one legible day or night thanks to the Lumi Bright Loom on it as well. And the fact that it's a full-size watch certainly helps with legibility too. 42 millimeters in diameter, but quite a big 42. I will explain myself later. 12 mil thick, 49 lug to lug, 22 millimeter lug width. Now there is a bit of a taper down to 19 and a half, back up to 22 at the clasp. Sized up for me, seven inch wrist. I had to remove two links by the way. So bigger guys, you have got maybe about an inch to spare here. It weighs in at 155 grams. So stainless steel watch hovering around that kind of ideal 150 gram point. So 316L stainless steel case, crown and fixed stainless steel bezel. I'll show you the mixed finishes here in just a second. It is a stainless steel bracelet, but that's where some of the economizing can be detected. Those are hollow end links and that is a press clasp. Mind you, you spend $500 on a Seiko Sumo and they still give you a press clasp. The clasp actually isn't too bad. Four micro adjusts, which I appreciate, that's longer than the distance between those links and it's a nice fold over. It actually feels pretty safe and secure with the Seiko stamp there and the double security pushers. Now, a nice mixture of finishes on this watch, even if some of them aren't necessarily all that luxurious. High polish to the mid case, brushed lugs, there's a circular brush to the upper edge of the bezel and a little lip there. The side of the bezel is polished. So we go polish, brush, polish, brush. Unsigned, unguarded crown, field watch style here. No need for crown guards and it's not screwed down either. 
But if I move this watch around in my studio lights, you can maybe see a little bit of inconsistency underneath that high polish side. So a variety of finish, but not necessarily incredible quality of finish, but it is a budget watch we're dealing with after all. You can see just a little beveled edge to the piece of hard lex crystal. So that's a flat mineral crystal, Seiko's own proprietary mineral. Again, you're not getting sapphire at this price from a Seiko, nor nothing like this price from Seiko. I talked about the clasp, let's have a look at the bracelet. Again, consistent finishing, but you can see here quite clearly, it's a little bit rough. Now, those links look like three link oysters. They are in fact just single links crafted to look like three link oysters. Push pins though, no problems at all, nice and easy to adjust. Now they may be hollow end links, but at least it has an inverted mid link of the end link, which does help this watch wear better on smaller wrists. You even get a screw down display case pack for your $140, showing off what is a rather old school movement from Seiko. It is a 7S36, which is a 23 jeweled cousin of the 7S26, non-hacking, non-hand winding, so you are doing the Seiko shuffle with this one, and you'll never quite be able to set it as accurately as you'd like. Having said that, you can sort of back hack the movement if you apply a little bit of pressure backwards on the crown, you can at least pause it and then release it when you've got it to the right time. Although, let's be honest, it's a budget auto. It's only gonna ever stay accurate for a couple of days at most. Let's pop this one in the time grapher and see how it does. Well, bit of a mixed bag with this one. I'm certainly not complaining at bang on accurate zero seconds per day variance in the default flat on its back position. Amplitude could be higher and the beat error slightly higher than I would have expected from a brand new watch. But like I said, it's a budget auto. You shouldn't expect too much. Stated tolerances of these movements are minus 20 to plus 40. So if you're buying one, it is a bit of a lottery. Generally, I find they run somewhere between zero and plus 10, but there's no guarantees at this price that they will. But let's get back to what has always been my favorite feature of this watch, the dial. Super legible thanks to those big Arabics printed on the dial and the white picket fence, fence post hands, plus you have the addition of the hour markers around that outer edge. You wouldn't necessarily call it uncluttered though, would you, thanks to not one but two applied logos. Shouldn't really be complaining about that for $140 though. The Seiko branding is applied as is the out of date now five logo. Not quite sure why they bother printing the word sports underneath the five, plus you have three lines of text beneath the pinion in the form of automatic 23 joule and 100 meters. Now being field watch style, not only do we have one to 12 in large Arabics printed on the outer edges of that inner dial, we also have 13 to 24 all printed in white. Great handset though, I've always thought they were perfect for this watch, just the right size, and I really appreciate that addition of the little bit of color there on the second hand, that little red arrow tip. There's even a bit of loom there as well. I'll put the loom video in now, Seiko's Lumi Bright and plenty of it. Lumi Bright is their own proprietary loom for those of you who aren't familiar with it. It has a kind of green color, same as Super Luminova C3. It's kind of comparable to that. For a budget watch, this is excellent. I think the PVD version actually has loomed Arabics. Not so on this one. You just have to contend with a well loomed handset and loomed markers on the outer edges of the dial. And I mentioned it in the intro, I think that day date complication not only adds a heap of practicality if you are wearing this one as a daily, the fact that it's color match adds a touch of class you don't necessarily see from other brands at this price. I guess because Seiko are making the movement, they can specify whatever color of date wheel they choose. And I'm glad that they chose black. And on wrist, I think it looks fantastic. It certainly doesn't look like a $140 watch. Nice touches, the applied logos, the color match date wheel, and that just a splash of color on the tip of the second hand. I think taking this watch up a couple of notches. I did say that it wore quite big for a 42 though. The diameter's fine. The lug to lug at 49 isn't that outlandish either, but there's not a huge amount of curvature to the case and it does protrude a little bit. 12 mil is not all that slim for a field watch, for a non dive style watch and you can feel it sitting a little bit high off the wrist. 22 mil lugs, 22 mil clasp. I would have loved to have seen a bit more taper here, possibly even 20 millimeter lug width from the beginning with this one. 
It doesn't get much more legible than that though, does it? Well proportioned white hands, white arabics on a black dial with the addition of those minute markers around the outer edge. Super easy to read this one. Now outside, hard lex crystal with no anti-reflective undercoating, but it hardly needs it because of the handset, because of the arabics and because of that black dial. And that said on wrist, it isn't necessarily a huge watch in terms of the dimensions, but it does wear quite flat and it does stick up a little bit because of that bold case back. Looks good in the pocket shot though, doesn't it? I can't think of too many watches that look better than this one for $150 or less. If you can, please leave me a comment. I would love to hear about it. So I think for $140, this watch has an awful lot going for it. I am going to find a few things to complain about though. Unsigned crown, inconsistencies of case polishing, I can cope with that for the money. I can also cope with the non-hacking, non-hand winding 7S36. I can just about cope with the hollow end links and the press clasp as well. What I struggle to cope with is a bracelet that doesn't just rattle, it squeaks. I kid you not it squeaks quite badly. And it's not just this one. The last one I bought four years ago was exactly the same. It reminds me of that decades old Volkswagen Golf advert where the guy can't find the squeak in his car and it turns out to be his wife's earrings. You know exactly where the squeak is coming from. If you've got a Seiko SNZG on your wrist, it's coming from the bracelet. And because it's a Seiko, don't expect it to line up as it should. Check the distance between the Arabic at six and the marker that it's supposed to be directly in line with. That is epic. People accuse me of Seiko bashing. It's easy to Seiko bash when they make mistakes like this and that's right through the range from $140 up to $1,000. So why did I sell my last one then? Well, I sold it because of the squeaky bracelet. I'm a bracelet guy and I just couldn't cope. I do hear that you can literally oil these. Perhaps I will get the three in one out to this model at some point in the future. And I sold it because it was just a little bit too large for me. I prefer a kind of 40, 20, this being 42, 22. It just wore a tad big. Obviously you can get it on a canvas strap or I could have swapped it over for numerous leather straps in my collection. Maybe I'll give this one an extended go. But if you can get over its idiosyncrasies and its foibles, the non hacking movement and a couple of inherent limitations. I think this watch offers incredible value in the current market and that looks like something that's only going to improve as Seiko continues to turn the screw in the future. So there you have it, the Seiko SNZG13. For my money anyway, bang for buck, dollar for dollar, this is the best value Seiko that you can buy currently 2021. Big, handsome, legible, automatic, lots of nice details, lots of nice touches, and arguably all the specs you really need anyway. Okay, it's got Harlex Crystal and it's got a basic movement that doesn't hack or hand wind, but I'm fine doing the Seiko Shuffle when I wanna wear this one, considering how cheap the watch is. It is a little bit large though, that's why I sold the first one, and that's probably why I'll sell this one as well. And of course it's a Seiko, so nothing lines up. You can't get everything for $140. Thanks for watching. I will see you in a future video.